Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna go over 2020 ACLS certification code medications used. I'm gonna demonstrate a live demo as a simulation on how to prime and prepare your meds most commonly used in the event of a code blue, as this will also help with your mock exam that can be used as a cheat sheet with a quick review of your H's and T's. By the way, my name is Christina, nurse practitioner. If you're new here, welcome. This channel has been created for nursing students and nurses to help you along your nursing journey. If that sounds like something you're into, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. Okay, so here are your most common code meds you should have available to you that would be in your crash cart. This includes your D50, your sodium bicarbonate, atropine, epinephrine, calcium chloride, lidocaine, and vasopressin. You would also need your amiodarone, adenosine, dopamine, and magnesium. I recommend you take a look at your crash cart to help you get familiar with your supplies. In the event of a code, you must be ACLS trained and certified. Certification is every two years. Um, it must be renewed per your recommended employer guidelines. Let's begin with epinephrine, also referred to as epi. It doses at one milligram per 10 mils in a pre-filled syringe. This medication can be given every three to five minutes during a code after two successful rounds of CPR have been completed. This medication is given to the patient that is in cardiac arrest with a shockable rhythm. This would be your V-fib, which is ventricular fibrillation, or your pulseless V-tac, also known as ventricular tachycardia. When I'm in a code and if I'm in charge of meds in the crash car, I'm gonna be prepared. My number one drug that is your go-to is always Epi. You can open the box, it'll say open here, or release from the bottom of the package, as the body of the box should not look like it was tampered. You're gonna flip the caps, you will then thread the vial injector with three half turns or until the topper is pierced by the metal cannula. Never try to push the vial into the injector. It causes this misalignment. Don't forget to remove the cover and expel air before injecting into the IV. Some very important key points I want to cover regarding epi. Epi can be used in cardiac arrest for V-fib refractory. So let's say after the second shock, you can give epi as your first drug of choice as it can be given as one milligram IV or IO. IO is intraosseous, given into the bone through a needle when IV access is unsuccessful. Also, epi can be given in the setting of a systole, so your dead rhythms. I've also seen after ROSC, which is return of spontaneous circulation, if patient responded to epi, they will most likely start an epi drip for your hemodynamically unstable patient to maintain blood pressure within normal limits. You can start the drip at two to 10 mics per minute. Okay, so let's move on to amiodarone. This is always a second drug of choice after epi for your dead rhythms. Like I just mentioned, such as refractory V-fib and two rounds of epi have been given, this would be your next drug of choice. You must remember the dose because it will be asked which your first dose is always 300 milligrams IV, then the second dose is 150 milligrams IV push followed with two saline flushes. Another alternative medication is your lidocaine. First dose is one to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. Second dose is 0.5 to 0.5 milligrams per kilogram. This medication is not commonly given, so it would take the place of amiodarone. I've never had to give this medication, so it's not that commonly used where I work. Okay, so let's talk about adenosine. This is the medication that will help convert your rhythm to normal sinus rhythm. But before it converts, it causes a six second pause what I call a flat line and is intense to watch, but your patient will feel so much better after. I've given this and when you do, it's an unforgettable experience. So the first dose is given as six milligram rapid IV push followed with normal saline. Second dose is 12 milligram IV push every one to two minutes times one as needed. If required, this is given as a rapid IV push over one to three seconds. Another potential question on the exam. This can be given to your patient with a narrow complex tachycardia. Heart rate can be in the 200s. This is your patient that has a stable blood pressure and they are not responsive to vagal maneuvers like bearing down is not effective or ice to face typically for your pediatric child that is unable to 
to follow commands. Dosing for pediatric always refer to your PALS guidelines. This is a medication given before cardioversion. As a tip, when you do a cardioversion on a patient, I'll legit put a bed sheet from one side of the bed rail, wrap it, and place it on the other side of the top of the bed rail because when you charge and push the shock button for cardioversion, your patient will leap forward from the force of the energy of the cardioversion machine. So it helps ease the patient back to position and is something I learned from a cardiologist. It works great as a tip. Next drug is your atropine. Dose, one milligram bolus, repeat every three to five minutes. A max is three milligrams. This is given for your patient that is bradycardic and symptomatic. For example, this could be your patient with 40 beats per minute. Let's say the blood pressure is um, 82 over 64. The first dose is 0.5 milligrams. Next, you have your D50 given as an IV push. This is so hard to push, it takes a lot of effort. Like there is no such thing as pushing this vial rapid, it's like impossible. Um, ask any nurse, they'll say the same thing. This can be given in the setting of hypoglycemia. So low blood sugar, which is one of those H's and T's from your H's and T's for hypoglycemia. So as a note, it's very important to review your H's and T's, which are your reversible causes, and it will be discussed during a code. Um, this includes hypovolemia, which can be treated with volume, so fluid, um, hypoxia, which can be treated with oxygen. Another H is your hydrogen ion, which can cause acidosis. So sodium bicarbonate is treatment of choice, or sodium bicarb. Hypoglycemia can be treated with um, D50, Another H is um, hypokalemia or hyperkalemia. You also have hypothermia, um, warming measures would be in place. The T's are tension pneumothorax. Um, treatment would consist of a chest tube, link above on chest tubes. Cardiac tamponade, um, treatment would be a thoracotomy. And toxins, you want to use a reversal antidote, link above. The last T is for thrombosis, such as pulmonary thrombus that can be treated with anticoagulants or fibrinolytic therapy, or your coronary thrombosis, which can be treated with a stent placement or coronary bypass. Another medication that can be given is magnesium in the setting of torsades or for cardiac arrest, such as pulseless VTAC that is related to torsades. I've also noticed magnesium low in your ETOH patient and is always repleted and given as part of a banana bag for fluid replacement. It's called a banana bag because it's it's yellow and it contains magnesium, thymine, and folic acid. Okay, so another medication is your sodium bicarbonate, also referred to as sodium bicarb, which is 8.4% sodium bicarbonate injection, which is 50 milli equivalents, which is one MEQs per mil, which is a lure lock pre-filled syringe. This drug is often given in the setting of acidosis as part of your H's for hydrogen ion acidosis. This medication helps as a buffer to offload the increase in acid production to allow your body to restore normal homeostasis. And your calcium chloride, 10% given as 13.6 milli equivalents, one gram per 10 mils, given in a lure lock pre-filled syringe, is another medication given to offset hyperkalemia or high levels of magnesium. If you find value in this content, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and be sure to check out my playlist on more nursing content. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.